Dr. Tamsin Edwards, you're a lecturer in environmental sciences. Can you tell me a little bit about your research area? Well, actually, I've covered quite a lot of different areas in environmental sciences. I've worked on uh, looking at past climates. So, you know, what did the Earth look like in the last ice age, 20,000 years ago? Can we repeat, reproduce that in a computer model? Um, but at the moment, I'm looking at sea level rise in the future. What is the Greenland ice sheet going to do? What is the Antarctic ice sheet going to do? Uh, can we predict those with computer models? But my, my kind of overarching interest in all of those different things is um, the uncertainty. Uh, what's the uncertainty in the predictions we use um, those models for? You know, whether it's thinking about the past, the present or the future, how sure are we about what the models are saying? Is there anything in particular you're working on at the moment? Because I see you brought the world along. Yeah, well, I quite like this globe because it's got, um, it actually has Antarctica. Uh, you can swivel it around and see it. Yeah, you don't normally see a globe in that position, no, do you? No, you don't. So you get a really good view. Um, of course, on maps, it sometimes even gets uh, left off completely. Yeah. So it's nice. You can take a really good look. Um, and Antarctica is interesting because it's one of the most uncertain parts of future sea level rise. It's quite a mystery still what, what's going to happen. And... The other nice thing about this globe is it's, it's sort of knobbly. I don't know if you can see in the Yeah, it's got a relief to it, hasn't it? And that's another thing that's really important for Antarctica is actually what happens underneath. You know, so there's a great big ice sheet, but underneath is um, uh, sort of a bedrock. Um, some of it's hard rock and some of it's sed sediment. And what goes on underneath the ice sheet really shapes how it responds to climate change. Um, whether it's a kind of a knobbly bed, whether it's kind of slippery or, or rough um, is really important. So it's, it's a difficult thing to understand. We can't really measure the bed of the, of the Antarctic ice sheet that well. We haven't measured it everywhere. So it's a really interesting area to study, a sort of rich vein of research to, to look into. Is there a particular bit of Antarctica that you're working on? Well, I'm interested in um, what the whole ice sheet is doing, but there's a particular area that's changing a lot at the moment. So um, if you look at the, you've got the peninsula up here, the sort of sticking out bit with all the mountains. Yeah. And then if you follow that down um, along the coast to this bay here, that's called the um, Amundsen Sea Embayment. And there are these two vast glaciers called Pine Island Glacier and Thwaites Glacier, which are really changing at the moment. We've seen quite a lot of satellite data in the last few years that show they're losing ice, that show that the edge of the ice sheet is, is sort of retreating in land, so they're contributing to sea level rise. So we're interested in those areas. Um, we're interested to understand how much of that is caused by natural change and how much by humans. We're interested in how much it's going to continue in the future, how much sea level rise we'll get from the you know, in the future from that area. And of course we're interested in whether it's going to start happening in other areas in Antarctica, um, or other areas vulnerable. So uh, yeah, so that, that one region is particularly interesting, but how does it apply to the whole ice sheet? Okay, so that's your research. How does that then feed into the teaching that you do here? Um, well, I'm writing a course which is a sort of an overview of climate change and into that I'm, I'm putting a lot of the things I'm really interested in my research about. So I'm linking to some of my papers, for example, um, uh, and I'm talking about the statistics and the uncertainty. Um, and a lot of people don't think of that as an interesting topic. I, I don't think I did as an undergraduate. I don't think I thought statistics were in was interesting. But once you do research, you realise um, how statistics is the key to you know, seeing how sure you are about your results. You know, the whole point about science is to make, uh, to get results, to understand things, to make predictions, and statistics is how sure you are about those things. So I'm interested in kind of bringing that into the science of the module, but because also the module's about the relationship between science and society, I'm interested in how does that affect how the public understand climate science? You know, statistics is difficult, it's complicated, um, and so how, how much has that got in the way of people understanding and using climate science? So you have this statistical range from the best case scenario to the worst case scenario. How useful is that in explaining future climate change to the general public and the policy makers? Particularly in the UK, uh, but lots of other countries as well, policy makers are really interested in uncertainty and the, the full range of, of, you know, the risk of what different things can happen. Equally in the public, uh, some people really want to hear what's the best case, what's the worst case. Um, you know, what's the full kind of range of things that we think are plausible. And some just want to hear kind of one story, what's the most likely story, for example. Um, so it really depends and you have to kind of tailor it a bit to what people understand or want to know, particularly. This is a, a bit of a mean question, but you work in climate change, so I have to ask you, when it comes to the future, are you an optimist or a pessimist? Well, it's really important to divide that, I think, into two parts, because 
you know, you can be optimistic or pessimistic perhaps about what the climate is going to do. You might be focusing on the worst case scenarios or the best case scenarios um, of what, how the climate will respond. And then, of course, you've got to consider what humans will do uh, and, you know, what actions we think we're going to take, um, what technologies we might invent. Uh, and I have to say, on that front, I have no idea. <laughs> but this is, this is my research area, is, you know, what's the uncertainty, what the climate will do? And as I say, I'm, I'm really interested in looking at the full range of, of possible futures. Tamsin, that's been fascinating. Thank you. Pleasure.